Hello and welcome along to the Property Academy podcast. I'm your host, Emma Knight. And I'm Andrew Nichol. And today on the show, we're talking about the potential impact of ongoing lockdowns on the property market in Auckland. Now, this is particularly timely because I am recording today from my bedroom in Auckland. <laughs> Andrew, you are in the studio. Yes, I am. And I'm fully dressed as opposed to you. Well, no, nobody can see what's underneath, <laughs> so I think that's that's okay for the people who are watching on YouTube or watching at home as well. Um, now, let's talk about what the potential impact is going to be, both over the long term and the short term. But first of all, I want to hear your thoughts, Andrew. How long do you think the threat of lockdowns is potentially going to go on here in Auckland? Is it going to go on for a while? Uh, look, this is absolutely something we need to get used to living with, uh, and it is going to go on for at least the foreseeable future. You, you, until until we have um, a, 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 a solid vaccine rollout at a level where um, herd immunity kicks in, we are going to be in and out of lockdown. Uh, the Prime Minister has, has made that quite clear. And you've got to remember, because Auckland is so highly populated and it is prim- the primary border for New Zealand, this is where people are going to be coming in who carry the who are infected, and actually we looked at some interesting stats around how uh, how dense a household might be or how many people in a particular dwelling. So we took the stats for Otara. So there you've got fifty or oh, eighty five thousand people, and you've got twenty and a half thousand dwellings. So that means for every dwelling you have four point one five people. Now compare that to Invercargill where you've got 54,000 people and you've got about the same dwellings. You've got 21,759. That means for every household, you've only got two and a half people. So you've got 67% more people living in a single household in Ōtara and Papatoi versus Invercargill. So what does that mean? If you're living in a house with more people in it, then you've got more risk of someone coming home and spreading that virus. And of course, it probably also means that because of the fact that the house size is probably the same in Invercargill as it is in Papatoi, maybe you tend to go out. You tend to go out a bit more. So you're going to the mall. You're going to gym. So you're going to the supermarket. So you're increasing that risk of spreading the virus. So there will continue to be an ongoing threat of lockdown, and, and it's going to happen. This is just a way of life now, so we have to kind of get used to it. And um, you know, th- this is just the the facts of South Auckland. You, you, it's not it's not that we're picking on it as an area. Uh, great investment. It's just the fact that you uh, ha- have more highly dense uh, uh, households, and there's more risk of spreading that virus. And of course, those are the people there. Uh, generally people who are more likely to be border workers. So they might be cleaners or or people working in the laundries. Uh, they could be people who are processing baggage, uh, baggage at the airport. It could be a number of different things. They could be the bus drivers. It could be people working at hotel security. Uh, and, and it clearly is an issue. Now, these people are being prioritised as well for that vaccine rollout, but there's no certainty about when that's going to be finished and necessarily how effective it's going to be. One thing that I, I, I don't I don't claim to be an epidemiologist by any stretch, but one thing that I heard on The Economist, which was particularly interesting, was that we don't have a good sense of necessarily how effective a vaccine might be. So if you only, if you vaccinate 80% of people, but that vaccine ends up being 80% effective, then only 64% of the population are affected. And to get to that state where you've vaccinated 80% of the people can be a tough goal as well. So uh, we've got to first of all understand how many people can we vaccinate, then we've got to understand, well, how effective is that virus over a long period? We don't necessarily have those those stats. So I certainly don't think that a, vi- a vaccine is a panacea that's going to be a cure for um, the p- potential lockdown. So I do think we're going to have it potentially for longer than a lot of people are thinking. But let me ask you this, Andrew. When we look out over, say, a 10-year period, what's the long-term impact on the Auckland property market in terms of these lockdowns? Are people going to move away? Look, I think that over the long term, so a 10-year period, absolutely negligible. It's not going to be a major impact. It's just going to be one of those things we look back on and talk about that time that we got locked in and got through um, Tiger King on Netflix. But 
you, you are going to have a lot of um, pent-up demand created by these lockdowns, you know, in the short term. So we see things like um, really high rates of inquiry on our website during lockdown because people have a bit more time to consider things. Trade me uh, as well. They, they're having a lot of people sitting at home looking at houses and, and um, you know, maybe if they are in a house which is a bit too small for them, they're looking for a new house or they're, they're looking to renovate their house, all of these kind of things because we are sitting in a house. So in the short term, absolutely. Absolutely, there's going to be an effect, and certainly when we come out of lockdown, people might decide they don't want to live with their partner anymore because they're too much of a pain. They keep changing the channel, and so now they're looking for extra space. And I shouldn't laugh about it because it's not really that funny. But we did have quite a lot of inquiry through the property management firm. We have uh, venture management, uh, just either during and after lockdown, the 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 one that we had 12 months ago, and um, because people had separated. And I think um, Ed and I were just talking before about one of our friends. Uh, he too, I think, separated and got back together at least 14 times during lockdown. <laughs> now, I think the interesting point here, Andrew, as well, is that it's the the key th- the key element on what's the impact on the Auckland market will be comes down to when supply and when demand kick in. So after a lockdown ends, generally we will see quite a lot of demand released onto that market all of a sudden because it's pent up over a, a, a lockdown. And even you, you're absolutely right that we saw a significant amount of inquiry uh, 24 hours after the lockdown started. And, and what I mean by that is people do have time to sit around and think about investment property or think about purchasing that first home. And that demand is released onto the market as soon as the lockdown ends. Now, that is not the same with supply. The opposite effect happens. So let's talk about what happens generally or what we've seen with previous lockdowns um, in regards to supply and people selling properties on the market. Because first of all, what's going to happen is, of course, people are going to hold off from listing their properties on the market during a lockdown. Of course you can't, because what are you going to do? Like You can't have a real estate agent come to your house. You can't hold up some open homes. Now, once that lockdown is lifted, there'll be some people who um, then release their property onto the market, but it's at a lesser rate. So Aucklanders, during a lockdown, we'll start to save more. We're not able to go to restaurants. We're not out spending money going to the movies. We're not going rock climbing. We're not going on trips to um, Matakana or some of the other great spots or uh, markets you must that we save like to go all that to in Auckland. entertainment that you were saying last week that you used to spend the $300 a week on travel entertainment, whatever that was. It, well, it definitely wasn't travel entertainment, Andrew. You're putting words in my mouth now. But I also think as well, the other key thing which a lot of people aren't talking about is I believe the likelihood of a trans-Tasman bubble or international travel starts to get less likely. It starts to get pushed out every time we have another lockdown because Australia will shut its borders. We're not able to go over there. And what that the impact of that is that money that we otherwise would have spent or saved to go on to international travel is saved. And there are some really interesting stats that particularly came out of the lockdowns from last year around how much countries will save during a, even relatively short lockdowns. So let me tell you about the UK. So in February 2020, all household, household deposits went from £5 billion pounds to £16.2 billion pounds in April 2020. So in just two months, there was about an extra £11.2 billion pounds saved. Let's talk about the US as well. In the, in the early uh, 2020, the personal savings rate, the amount that people were saving from what they were earning was under 10%. That spiked to about 32, 33% in mid-2020. Of course, that somewhat helped because the US were also sending out stimulus checks and some things like that. But the key message is what? That during a lockdown, people will save. And that makes sense because we're not going overseas and we're not spending a lot of money because we've got to stay stay at home. Now, the key thing here is, well, what are people going to do with those savings? Generally, if you have the expectation, and we've already seen this in the New Zealand market, if you have the expectation that you're going to be spending more time at home, 
then you will generally tend to renovate as opposed to sell and then buy another property. You've got, you are motivated to improve the current state of your home because you're spending a lot of time there and you've got that expectation you're going to stay there for longer. So you might install a spa pool, you might put up a pergola, you might build a home office out the back. Now, all of this, if you're going to renovate as opposed to selling your property and purchasing another one, is that there is less stock coming onto the market. Because you may have needed more of the bank's money in order to trade up in the past to conduct or to conduct renovations in the past, because perhaps you didn't have that money sitting there as savings. Now, if you do, you can afford to do that on the place that you currently live and not have to go through and spend money on a real estate agent. Now, the key message there is that there will be a short-term supply shortage, which is further exacerbated in Auckland. We've already talked about that. There's not enough properties that are being brought to market. Every time there's a lockdown, I see the, that problem being even further exacerbated, but we still have that uh, increase, that short-term increase in demand, which we just talked about. So that has a stimulatory impact on house prices because demand, uh, supply is restricted and demand still continues to be strong because people are saving, people are thinking about investing or purchasing their own homes. And I think that's the ongoing pattern that I'm expecting to see. And we've already seen this pattern happen as we've come out of lockdowns in the past. And actually, I just wonder, you know, if people do go as far as putting in a spa pool, you know, putting in the new barbecue area, putting in the home office, putting in the home gym, uh, I'm just listing everything we've done, um, do do they then want to see a good return on investment? And so, you know, they might be much less likely to sell. So this could be, you know, rather than just be a 12-month thing or, or a 24-month thing, it could turn into a five-year thing because they want to get good use out of that pool and they don't need to find a bigger house because they've got use of that pool. So what else could happen? Well, the other big thing with another lockdown is that it gives them a lot more economic uncertainty. So the chances of interest rates rising in the short term decreases and, and pushes that date out before we see, you know, three, four percent interest rates. Now you might say to me, well, Ed, aren't businesses going to do quite poorly and aren't incomes going to fall if we have more lockdowns? How is that going to potentially have a stimulatory impact on the market in terms of house prices? How are house prices going to go up if, if incomes fall? Well, a couple of things that I want to say. First of all, the evidence today is that employment has re remained remarkably strong here in New Zealand. So unemployment is currently about 4.9% in the December quarter uh, after a brief spike in the previous one. And there, while there are definitely more people looking for work now than they were in the pandemic, this comes off a very low base. We already had very low unemployment here in New Zealand, which is why we needed immigration to continue to fill some of those jobs. So even though we've got more people who are out there looking for work and certainly doing it at top, I don't want to give the impression that they're not, because we've got so much stimulus happening here in New Zealand, we've still got a good, a good number and a decent amount of employment happening. So I don't expect that we're going to see incomes drop away to a large degree. And certainly where there is unemployment, it is primarily felt among uh, people with lower incomes who potentially weren't looking for to purchase a home anyway. So if we've got this massive lack of stock, even if we see a decrease in employment and increase in unemployment, we can still have a strong market. So let's just talk about what the opportunities there are for buyers. So right now, if you are in lockdown and you don't have time to go, you're not using your time to go out to the pub with your mates, then maybe this is the time to get uh, you know as much research in as possible, uh, start to have a look on the internet, <laughs> again, if you want to use our website, but you know things like Trade Me, do a bit of research and just bear in mind that there are going to be a lot of people out there who are either too afraid to take action in these times or are unable to because, you know, they might be first home buyers being, you know, slowly pushed out of the market or they might, you know, have uh, KiwiSavers potentially affected again if this becomes, you know, a longer term thing. And so take advantage of those opportunities in the market where it is a bit harder for other people because um, as I've said time and time again, you know, crises like this are where you make your money. And of course, there are some people out there, even though we've just talked about the fact that there's le a lack of stock on the market, there are still people who need to sell their homes. So there may be a seller who has already got a conditional offer accepted on another house that they really want to buy. And because there's no stock on the market, you know, they're really keen to purchase this. 
but they need to sell their current house uh, in order to meet that contract deadline. And if they're not have if they don't have a lot of people coming to open homes because we can't, we're in lockdown. That's going to put pressure on them to sell that property more quickly. Now, if you can be quick out of this lockdown, that might present a potential opportunity there, uh, especially if, right now during the lockdown while it's quieter. And in fact, I was just talking uh, with my friend Chris, who I think actually listens to the show. He's looking at a place in Otahu, and that is planning to go to auction in about one and a half weeks' time. So that would be after the lockdown. Now, we were discussing that his strategy might be to put in a pre-auction offer to try and pull that auction forward as soon as possible, potentially during the lockdown if he possibly can, because if he can put that offer in, pull that auction forward, then there are other first-home buyers who will be unable to bid. Yeah. Why? No not because they've been pushed out of the market, but because they haven't done their due diligence yet. So he's already conducted his due diligence on this property. He's ready to go. He's satisfied the bank's conditions. But if other first home buyers haven't done that and aren't able to because of the lockdown, they can't get a valuer in or their professionals in, then that's going to present an opportunity to use this where people are perhaps a little bit hesitant. But I'm talking about a very short window. This isn't a six-month window. It's not a three-month window. I'm talking about a couple of weeks. And actually, just the other part to that is vendors are going to be far more motivated to take a pre-auction offer right now because of the uncertainty. So, you know, if I had a property on the market and a, a good pre-auction offer came in and I was in Auckland, I'd probably just take it right now. And yes, the auction still gets brought forward. Uh, but if but if you cut out those other people that haven't completed their due diligence, there'd be money. Certainly. And I think what we were discussing in that instance was that his strategy should be to offer enough to pull the auction forward, but not so much that he starts to starts to overpay. Because to, again, it depends on how quickly these people need the money and how quickly they actually need to move the property. But it's certainly worth having a go, offering perhaps less than he otherwise would have in order to see if he can get that property across the line. Right, let's wrap it up there. But please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. It really does help us get the message out to people. And hey, if you've got a topic that you'd like Andrew and I to talk about, then send us a text. Our number is 5522. Whip out your phone, send us a text, or just send me an email. My email is ed at opuspartners.co.nz. Thanks for listening to the Property Academy podcast. I'm your host, Ed McKnight. And I'm Andrew Nicholl. And we're going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tactics and insights to help you get the most out of the New Zealand property market. Until next time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Amazing. You just had to record. (laughs) Yeah.